You're watching ABC 10 Plus tonight. Hello, I'm Laura Painter. You're watching ABC 10 Plus tonight. Grapes aren't the only thing grown in wine country. We look at how cannabis is helping grow the economy there. And in dollars and cents, what a change in the federal interest rate could mean for home buyers. Then, how local artists use visual storytelling to honor Filipino identity, history, and culture through a new exhibit. ABC 10 Plus Tonight starts right now. We all know Sonoma County is known around the world for its wine, but that grape-friendly Sonoma climate is also great for another well-known California crop. Here's meteorologist Brendan Mincha with the details. Sonoma County. For many people, Sonoma conjures up images of rolling hills, world-class vineyards, and weekend wine-tasting getaways. However, there's more than just grapes being grown here. There are some new rules and regulations around the corner, which is gonna create more public access um, to these farms, potentially retail sales. Sonoma County is headed in a quite progressive direction as it relates to, to cannabis and tourism. Sonoma County has a great climate for growing grapes, but it's also a great climate for cannabis. The warm, dry summers, cool overnights, and late start to the rainy season means in the fall, you can end up with a field like this. It's got its challenges like growing cannabis anywhere. Eric Pearson is a cannabis grower in Sonoma County and CEO of Spark. He's grown cannabis in California for more than a decade. You know, this year's been great. You know, it's been extremely dry. Um, a little bit hotter than we like, but um, with that we get drier evenings and drier mornings and that results in less mold pressure and that results in us letting the flowers fully mature, uh, which it's those last week or so that really uh, you count on to really get uh, a ripe fruit. Like most things grown in Sonoma, occasional fog, molds, and temperature swings pose natural challenges to the cannabis crop. And in recent years, the heat has become more of a concern. It's just hotter. We've never had 102. It's not great for the flower production, but at least if it's hot, it's not wet, typically. Temperature plays a part in the color and taste of the cannabis. Extended periods of heat mellow out the flavor. Well, here's a nice purple one here. That's kind of pretty there. I know that's too far away. This one back here. And you want this that one. color, right? Yeah, people like purple. Well, they'll be picky sometimes. There's too purple, they don't want it. It's hard to please people sometimes. With the calendar approaching November and the nights getting cooler, the harvest is in full swing. And following a great growing season, there's a lot of work to be done. And so what we're doing right now is we're getting all of our cannabis hung dry. So we have these awesome racks that we're able to double stack. And we have this amazing facility that we're able to actually control all the temperatures and variables. Max Bowen also grows cannabis in Sonoma, which he says is the best place to grow. Watching the harvest come in from the fields, it's easy to see why. This is freshly cut off the plant. We cut it to size of the bins so it fits exactly on the hangers as we need it to, to maximize every square inch. And when we're in here, a lot of the workers are able to spot issues maybe we didn't catch in the field. This is gonna be probably a 10 to 12 hour day. We actually hand trim everything. Okay. Whereas a lot of people will use machines. Once cannabis is trimmed and hung, it's moved to huge drying rooms on site. We aim to get the moisture content of this plant down to 50% okay. uh, within as quick as we can, really, to stop any molds that may be hanging out. And then after we get it down to 50%, we ease back the system a little bit to let it dry slower. So we get a better cure uh, preserves more of the terpenes, which is what creates the smell of the cannabis. During my visit, this room smelled the most like cannabis. Plants in the field had that distinctive smell, but it was more amplified in this confined space. And Eric tells me that's a good thing. You trim it, you put it into a bag, and then when you open that bag, you want it to still smell. As you get further down the process and closer to the bag, it gets more and more challenging to preserve that nose. A consumer wants that smell, whether it be something more along the lines of like a diesel or fuel or something more tropical uh, like a lime or a lemon. The cannabis will stay in this room for 10 to 14 days. 
From here, it gets trimmed and shipped to Santa Rosa to be produced and packaged. If it passes strict safety testing, it'll be shipped to dispensaries across the state. If it doesn't pass, they have to discard the entire batch. Uh, we have such stringent testing that it's down to the parts per billion in the plants. And if we even tried to use something, it would come up in a test and we'd have to throw it away. One of the biggest issues a lot of farmers here in Sonoma County have uh, gone up against is when they're next to vineyards. The stuff that are neighboring the fences all start testing dirty. It's a real problem. But the weather and vineyard pesticides aren't the only challenges these growers face. We're working with our county government right now to make changes in the ordinance. We have a canopy tax here that's charged locally. I think it's like $35,000 an acre. It was twice that for outdoor. We've got that reduced significantly last year. Eric and Max say unlike cannabis farmers, grape growers face far fewer taxes in Sonoma County and have extensive subsidies, giving wineries in Sonoma a competitive economic edge. Why would you want to tax your businesses a whole bunch in your county and make them less competitive on a state level? When I have a cultivation tax I have to pay here, I have to pass that through on the product that I sell, and I'm selling my product up and down the state of California. That means my product, when it gets to L.A., is going to cost more money than that product coming from a county that doesn't have a cultivation tax, right? Eric says reducing taxes is a relatively easy change that would help immediately. Not necessarily politically easy to do, but in theory, an easy law to change. Another element of cannabis law Eric would like to see changed regards tourism, being able to invite the public to the farms. That's something not currently allowed under county law. You've got your people watching TV think this is interesting. Allow me to be able to say, you know what, you can come on up and take a look at it, you know? And you can buy cannabis from our little farm stand here. You can come out, you can have a nice afternoon uh, and, and do your thing. Um, that would be hugely beneficial to us. And we reached out to Sonoma County about what they are doing to help cannabis growers. They said in a statement, part quote, the county of Sonoma is committed to supporting the legal cannabis industry and has been proactive in working to establish a regulatory framework for the legal cannabis market that is consistent with state law and build on input from both the public and industry stakeholders. They say since 2021, they launched a review of their cannabis program, amended cannabis business tax rates, and awarded grant funding to eligible operators impacted by the war on drugs. And you can read their full statement right now on ABC. CBC10.com. Sacramento police are pleading with the public. After an employee at Chondo's Tacos was pistol whipped during a violent robbery. It happened Monday night at the business on Arden Way. The robbery was caught on surveillance camera. Police now say other taquerias in Sacramento were robbed last night. They're now investigating if there is a connection in this case. ABC10's Roxanne Elias joins us live from police headquarters right now. Roxanne, such a disturbing story. What are you learning tonight? Laura, the owner of Chondo's Taco, says his employees were left quite shaken up. He says the woman who was hit, sure, she's doing fine now physically, but she has been left traumatized along with all the other employees that were there. Sacramento police now investigating if these robberies are all connected. In the 14 years Chondo's Tacos has run its business off Arden Way, it's never experienced a robbery like the one employees experienced Monday night. The owner, Lisandro Madrigal, shared surveillance video that shows the robbery and the man seen pistol whipping the cashier, video we are choosing not to show. He then grabbed the cash register and ran away. So my employees are, are my family, right? You know, the two most important assets I have are my employees and my customers, and I want to make sure that they're safe. Sacramento police say robbery detectives are working on the case, but have not been able to identify the man. At this point, he is considered the lone suspect. On Wednesday, police had a message for him. This coward used a firearm and struck a female employee twice in the head. And so to the person that did this, I hope you're watching and I hope you do the right thing and turn yourself in. Uh, if you don't, just understand that our detectives are relentless. Sacramento police say they're investigating two other armed robberies at taco stands Tuesday night. One happened on East Commerce Way and 20 minutes later, another on Northgate Boulevard. They are trying to figure out if they are all connected. We're asking the community to do the right thing. Somebody knows who this person is. Somebody heard about it after the fact 
and we're asking them to contact us, whether it's uh, contacting the police department directly or they can go through Crime Stoppers. Madrigal says thieves had also broken into the business about a month ago after it closed for the night. He's now considering only taking electronic payments and has faith the robber will soon be caught. It, it feels really good that 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 um, we're getting the support from, from the police here in Sacramento as well as the community and you guys. Um, I, I feel pretty confident that at least, you know, he's going to be hiding you know, or leave Sacramento and go to a hole somewhere. As for charges, Sacramento police say this person may be facing armed robbery as well as numerous other charges, including felony assault. Right now, their biggest messages to businesses is if you look out for one another, they're also asking those businesses to be aware of what's happening in their area and to call police if they notice anything strange. I'm live in Sacramento, Roxanne Elias, ABC 10. Yeah, such a serious crime, Roxanne. The victim has been through so much. We hope that she is doing okay. Keep us posted. Roxanne, thank you. Well, from Turlock to Modesto, Rockland to Yuba City, Northern California is at the center of an ATM heist operation. Federal officials say it was carried out for months by an international group. ABC 10's Gabriel Porras spoke to a woman who was directly impacted. With years of experience grooming man's best friend, Stand, please. Kristen Boyster knows to listen to her four-legged customers. When they start to feel off or when they're bad, in a bad mood, like something happened or something's about to happen. Like when these two walked into her Modesto business in September. And they were just asking about an appointment. They wanted to see like how much I would charge for their dog. That conversation, just a distraction, law enforcement says, as two of their accomplices damaged security cameras and scoped out the ATMs next door. By the time Kristen opened in the next morning, the damage was done. And we can see a couple holes in the wall. We kind of knew that we got broken into because of the ATM. It wasn't just Stanislaw County businesses impacted, though. In a 78-page affidavit filed this month, federal prosecutors say the same group got away with more than $2.5 million in similar ATM heists from Southern California all the way to Seattle. So for them to take advantage of that was really frustrating. It started in January when FBI agents say the group of 10 mostly Chilean nationals used the darkness of night, black spray paint on cameras, cell phone jammers, and blow torches to break into the ATM vault at a Houston bank. Between June and September, they allegedly went on a crime tour of California, renting Airbnbs across the state while scouting out and eventually breaking into the vaults at nearly a dozen ATMs, including Roseville, Yuba City, Rockland, and Elk Grove. It was after a June attempted ATM robbery in Merced that the FBI started tracking the group. And just feeling like they can hit targets and just get away with it type of thing. That's really frustrating. But not for long. The FBI arresting the 10 just days ago as they were leaving another Airbnb in Seattle. I just hope they get what they deserve. I hope that they, they charge them to the full of the, the, you know, full of the law. In Modesto, Gabriel Porras, ABC 10. In court documents, the FBI said this is still an active case and some targets have not been arrested yet. A court date has been set for November 6th in Fresno. If convicted, the suspects could face up to 25 years in prison. A candidate for Folsom City Council is considering whether to press charges after she received a threatening voicemail from someone who was angry about her campaign material. ABC 10's Becca Habegger spoke with her today and one of her opponents who has also been the target of hurtful rhetoric. Signs of the seasons, Halloween and the election, line this Folsom neighborhood in City Council District 4. Good, luck. Good to see you, thanks. Barbara Leary is running for this City Council seat, precinct walking, talking with voters and getting her name out there. It's my favorite part of campaigning because I really like talking to people and finding out what their concerns are. But last week, she received a voicemail from someone upset that one of Leary's volunteers had left campaign material on his doorstep. She played the message for me. Hey, Barbara Leary. You ever come trespassing or your people come trespassing on my property? Believe your political garbage here again. I will personally bring it over to you and pound it where the sun don't shine. And that's not a threat. That's a promise. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How did you feel when you heard that? Well, it was shocking. I mean, it really was a threat of 
violence. She reported it to Folsom police, who confirmed to ABC 10 they're investigating the threat. Leary says police were able to identify the man based on his phone number and an investigator spoke with him. That person told him that he knew it was a mistake to have left that message and that he had no plan to proceed with any kind of violence or other contact with me. Still shaken from the message, Leary says hateful rhetoric in politics seems more common than it used to be. And sadly, Leary's not alone in experiencing harassment on the campaign trail. Well, I've been calling that uh, go back to your country. Ghoul Khan is also running for the District 4 seat. He says Folsom is a welcoming, diverse community, and he has only received racist, anti-immigrant comments while running for office. They don't represent Folsom. They don't represent our society. Our society has been very hospitable, very diverse, very inclusive. He and Leary are continuing to campaign in these final days before the election. In Folsom, Becca Habiger, ABC 10. The third candidate, Jim Ortega, declined an interview, but in a statement, he said that he has not received any threats or racist remarks, though he has told ABC 10 that there have been lies about him, which he has ignored. In tonight's Dollars and Cents, the Federal Reserve has just lowered interest rates for the first time in months after reaching record highs last year. Many of you are now wondering, what does this mean for my home or my ability to afford a home? I talk with a local real estate expert on how the Fed's latest interest rate change is impacting our area's housing market. It's a welcome change. Sacramento-based broker and owner of Greenhaven Capital, Kevin Odo, tells me the Federal Reserve's half a percentage point decrease last month has a lot of his clients asking how that'll change mortgage rates. But he says the Fed rate only explains part of the story. When the Fed changes the federal fund rate, that doesn't mean mortgage rates are going to fall at the same time. Right now, long-term fixed rate mortgage rates are at 6.4 percent. We actually saw rates fall ahead of the rate drop. So rates were coming down even before the Fed announcement. And then funny enough, even after the Fed announcement, we saw interest rates actually go up. Mortgage lender Freddie Mac says compared to a year ago, rates are more than one percentage point lower. This means good news for potential home buyers, especially if they shop around for the best quote. You'll want to do that because rates can vary widely between mortgage lenders. In Sacramento, we still have a relatively strong market. We've seen inventory tick up a little bit, but overall we still have historically low inventory. Lower mortgage rates are expected to spark more buyers to enter the market. But with that comes more competition and potentially higher prices. Buyers are very cautious when it comes to affordability, the price that they're paying. And I feel like sellers, you know, they can't really get top dollars unless they're adding value, unless they're you know, providing a competitively priced home or if they have a unique property that people want. But Odo warns, don't focus on timing the market. Instead, focus on a payment you can afford and a home that suits your budget and fits your needs. If rates drop, you have a chance to refinance later, but timing the market is ultimately impossible and, and you could really miss out on a golden opportunity. Experts say lower mortgage rates can bring down a home buyer's monthly mortgage payment, but keep in mind, High home prices are still keeping a lot of people from buying homes. One report by NPR says overall home prices in the U.S. have risen about 50 percent since early 2020. The conversation doesn't end here. Watch more of my dollars and stories. Just head over to ABC 10 plus. The app is free and available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV and Apple TV. You can also email me your questions at lpainter at abc10.com. Turning to our weather impact alert, we do have some flash flooding to tell you about in Spain. Look at this. It swept cars away, turned village streets into rivers, and killed at least 95 people. Floods of that mud-colored water tumbled vehicles down streets. Just look at that. At high speeds, police and rescue services used helicopters to lift people from their homes and boats to rescue drivers stranded atop their cars. The storms are forecast to actually continue through Thursday. And as we continue our weather impact alert, we do have some rain and snow that we're tracking right here in Northern California. Oh, we want to know, is that going to impact some of the big plans we have? Halloween's tomorrow. I know, and then the weekend is quickly approaching mm -hmm. as well. So we're going to time this all out. Here's a look at the headlines, and a couple of things have changed. It is going to be our first widespread rain and snow event with still looking at possible travel issues, but there is a change in timing. Not so much for the Halloween situation, but 
more so as we head towards our Friday forecast for Friday night football. Could have some wet ones out there for our game time. Here's a look at the first band of rain coming through. There's two waves that we'll be tracking. The good news on the timing for Halloween, it still looks like a dry forecast for the valley, and now it looks like a dry one as well for the Sierra. That big low, though, is going to be pressing our way. Staying with us for several days as you look at the timeline tonight, we have our rain and snow approaching with that snow level near 5,500 feet. Still want to take care of those decorations for for tonight as well as prepare for some slick spots on the morning commute, but it's not going to be a huge amount of rain. Then Friday night through Saturday, that's heavier rain and snow. We get right back into that evening weather impact alert through early Saturday, but the good news on that is it is going to be moving through a little bit quicker there on our Saturday for our weekend forecast. In the big mountain backyard, right now we have a mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures holding in the 60s is still quite chilly out there. Sunset at 608. 44 right now for Tahoe with mostly cloudy skies. So the band of rain moves through tonight. Again, it's an overnight system. This isn't going to have huge impacts for any sort of uh, a lot of outdoor activities. As you can see by the morning commute, things are already starting to dry out for the valley, but a few snow flurries still remain for this year. Bring the chains, all that winter gear in the car because we've got more of that snowy weather heading our way. But for Halloween time, again, things are going to be dry but chilly outside. Now let's get to that bigger band of rain. And like I said, the timing, we've sped up the system. So for Friday night football, we are looking at a rainy one, especially right through the central area, right along I-80. Now this will expand throughout the valley with some of the heaviest rain, possible thunderstorms even at midnight on Saturday. Snow will continue to fall in this year. Then by Saturday morning, we're starting to see some of those showers come to an end. So like I said, this is speeding up, but also clearing us out a little earlier for the weekend outlook. Not a ton of accumulated rainfall from the weather system that's coming in overnight tonight, but we could pick up about a half an inch or so by the time we get to our Friday, Saturday forecast. And for Sierra snow, keep in mind we have that winter weather advisory tonight through early tomorrow. We'll have about an inch to two inches of snow, but the next one coming in, that's the bigger one. One to 12 inches of snow possible throughout this year. Afternoon highs tomorrow in the 40s, 50s and 60s for the foothills. We're in the 60s along the coast and for inland areas as well. It is going to be a chilly forecast for us with on and off rain and snow showers for this year right through our early Saturday forecast. As we head to the foothills, it's all a rain event and then a mostly cloudy forecast as we wrap up the work week for the coast. Weather impact alert early tomorrow and then again late Friday through early Saturday. After that, we're pretty much done here. We dry things out uh, considerably with highs warming back into the upper 60s, low 70s. We've got the fall back on Sunday, but for Election Day, it's looking pretty good out there. High mm -hmm. near 70. Mm -hmm. That is good, huh? And you've kind of helped us plan out Halloween as well, right? Right. The evenings should be okay, you're thinking. Except for chilly. So yeah. anybody oh. that's got their kids out, just get the gloves on, get a nice heavy coat, and get mm -hmm. ready to go. I like to sneak in some thermals underneath yeah, so you can still see that go. costume. Mm -hmm. Monica, thank you. Agimat is this group exhibition of 20 Filipina, Filipinex artists here at the James Kaneko Gallery for Filipino American History Month. So Agimat, or Anting Anting, essentially is a charm that you wear to protect you, or it can give you superpowers. <laughs> Quite literally, like super strength. We gave the prompt to the artists to think about what it is that they do to not only protect, but also like steward our culture. And on top of that, when it comes to giving strength and superpowers, what gives you strength to dismantle or challenge colonialism? I think because of colonization, there is a cultural amnesia. Um, and there's this like sense of longing and disconnect in um, the Filipino diaspora. We have a word that's called kapwa, which means I am you and you are me, that we are not separate. Indigo is a representation of that because it is this magical color that is uh, represented in the sky and the waters. And it's also a plant that is native to the Philippines. So I am um, 
constructing a toyom, which is the Ilocano word for indigo, um, all natural dyed, cosicos, which is uh, another word for a weaving motif that is kind of like an optical illusion, quilt. It is the equivalent of like our evil eye, so it is a protective symbol. Abra is the national natural dye capital of the Philippines, and it's in the same region as where my ancestors are from. Um, which is Ilocos. Um, my family's from Ilocosor. And this is where the magic happens. I didn't think we had art and craft practices like this. It was through my teachers, through like decolonizing, that they were like, you know, actually, Jamie, there is a rich dye culture in the Philippines. To actually have natural dye, it's been so medicinal, helping me feel co more connected to the land that, ha that we've been disconnected from. To me, being in this exhibition is really about a sisterhood, this common thread that binds our experiences. I will be doing um, a process called Polaroid Emulsion Lifting. The person I'm capturing with the film, we photograph them in traditional Filipino regalia. They also symbolize that our connections with one another are what protect us. When you're uplifting voices of those who have been historically marginalized, you gain this perspective that's always been there, but it, it's new to you. It adds to the history of humanity. Thank you so much for watching ABC 10 Plus tonight. Remember, we're here 24-7 on the free ABC 10 Plus app. You can get your news and weather anytime, anywhere. I'm Laura Painter. See you next time. This election, the stakes could not be higher. And ABC 10 has all the national, state, and local election coverage you need. Watch us live on ABC 10 or streaming on ABC 10 Plus. For up-to-the-minute results on all our races, propositions, and the contest for the White House. And we'll break down results as they come in with our experts. Watch Your Voice, Your Vote Tuesday night live and streaming on ABC 10 Plus. Coverage starts at 5 p.m. ABC 10, we stand for you. Thanks for watching ABC 10 Plus. And now that you're here, why don't we take a look around and see what else is here? The very first tile on your left is always going to be streaming 24 seven. You can find us adjacent to that breaking news if it's there. And then right next to that, a replay of the most recent newscast, whether it's ABC 10 morning news at five, six or beyond, it's going to be there. The forecast beyond that and then right beyond that, the news that matters the most. Now that you know the basic tiles, let's go up to the top and take a deeper dive into news. We have every single newscast that you would need, including To The Point with Alex Bell, taking a deeper dive into the issues. Beyond that, ABC 10 Morning News at 5 and 6 and 11, the evening shows as well. Below that, you can watch the top stories from To The Point. Under that, dollars and cents, where you can learn how to navigate this challenging economy. And below that, you can watch our award-winning ABC 10 Special Investigations, where we hold the powerful accountable. Going into weather, Look, it's the 10-day forecast, getting you ready for the weekend and beyond. Beyond that, sports. I know you care about the Sacramento Kings. We have the most comprehensive guide to anything, everything Kings in the locker room and on the court. We have it. Below that, I know you care about the San Francisco 49ers. We can't mention Bay sports without talking about the Oakland A's. We have that too. What's super exciting, I know you care about high school sports. You'll never find a more comprehensive guide and team dedicated to high school sports. Backing out again, come up to the top and join me on Verify. I'm super excited about this. Our experts are checking the facts, verifying the truth for you. Jump up now to shows. Very excited about this. Oh, look, it's Take a Look. Uh, this is my show. Uh, I love movies, and if you love movies or streaming shows, whether it's on screens this big, this big, or this big, it's Take a Look. Uh, recently went behind the scenes, sat down with Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix to talk about Joker 2. I love the movie. and. Oh, I just heard you shout you hate the movie. Jump in, we talk about it on this show. Uh, other shows, Bartels Backroads, go up and down the state of California, tank of gas getaways, one fuel cell getaway, uh, like places like the Toy Museum. This is what kids did before they had screens. Uh, over here, the Moaning Caverns of Calaveras County, one of the most coveted caves in all of California. You know, watching this show, I discovered there's a cave that could fit the entire Statue of Liberty in your own backyard. You'll find about that and more with Bartels Backroads. Down below that, to the point, it is one of my favorite newscasts because they talk about news with Alex Bell the way you talk about news. It's conversational, but in depth at the same time. Below that, your California life. 
love this show. Whether it's entertainment, food, beverage, lifestyle, it's there. Desiree Shepard hosts and does an amazing job. So there you have it. It's ABC 10 Plus, the app. What do you need? We heard you and we got it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for streaming.